record Minecraft without lag. In this video, our main goal is getting Minecraft as lag free as possible. Now, in order to do that, we're actually going to be using Optifine. The reason being Optifine works with Forge mods, and if you wanted to run Forge mods, then you can use Optifine with Forge to do that. If you want to run Fabric, then you can also run Optifine with Fabric. Basically, Optifine has a lot of options when it comes to using it with mods and using it with everything. Now, Sodium, which is a competitor to Optifine, can actually give a bit better FPS, but overall, Optifine is going to have everything you need get great FPS while you're recording and have an amazing amazing setup once everything is all done for the ability to use it with mods. Now, I do want to mention that we recommend recording with open broadcaster software, OBS here, right? This is linked in the description down below. It's actually what we're recording this video with here. However, we're not going to be going over setting up OBS for lag-free recording. That's because that's not really my expertise. My expertise is Minecraft, right? And it's getting Minecraft as lag-free as possible with tons of FPS. However, this video here from Everything Tech is a super in-depth video on setting up OBS for recording, and that is linked in the description down below. It's great reviews. I watched it myself. It's a great setup for lag-free OBS recording. So go through this tutorial, then once you've went through this tutorial here, you will be able to record Minecraft with OBS lag-free. Now, first things first, we do need to download Optifine. So to do that, go to the second link in the description down below, and that will take you here. This is our in-depth guide on doing just that. How to install Optifine. It goes over downloading, installing, and playing Minecraft with Optifine. Even setting up Optifine is covered in this tutorial. However, we're going to be doing everything in the video tutorial as well. So once you're here, click on the yellow download Optifine button. That takes to Optifine's official download page where you want to select the version you want. Now for this, we're going to be using the most recent, which is 119. But if you wanted to select an older version, you can do so. Just click show all versions and then the process is basically the same. So under the version you want, click on the mirror next to that version. So click mirror there. That'll take you directly to that version's download page where you want to click on the blue download button. When you click on that, it will download automatically in the bottom left of Google Chrome or in the center of your screen on Mozilla Firefox. You may need to keep or save the file depending on your browser, and it's 100% safe to do that as long as Optifine's in the title, which as you can see in the bottom left, it is. We can then go ahead and close out of that and minimize our browser. Now let's go ahead and move Optifine to our desktop. To do that, click the little Windows icon. It's in the top left of my screen, probably the bottom of your screen or bottom center of your screen on Windows 11. Type in downloads. You have this downloads file folder here. Open that up, and then in here, you will find Optifine 119. Drag and drop this to your desktop just for ease of use. Now, if this icon isn't correct, don't worry. Let's try to open up Optifine first. To do that, right-click on Optifine, click on Open With, click Java, and click OK. If you have Java here, you click OK, go ahead, skip forward in the tutorial a little bit. However, if you don't have Java here, what we need to do is download and install Java 17. Java 17 is required in order to run Minecraft mods like Optifine in Minecraft. This is our in-depth guide to giving Java 17. It literally covers everything. We've got a video tutorial up here as well to help you get this figured out and get Java 17 installed. Super easy to do. However, if you are still having issues with Optifine after you've downloaded Java 17, you need to run the jar fix. This is going to take all the jar files to your computer and link them back to Java, making them work happily together. It's also worth noting, that's what's going to fix those icons if they're broken for you, right? If you don't have this icon, that's why. Nevertheless, now we can finally right-click on Optifine, click Open With, click Java, and click OK. That's going to open up the Optifine installer here, where we want to make sure that you have the version you want. In my case, 119. It could be 130 for you. It doesn't matter what version this is, even if it's in the future. And then click on Install, and it will go ahead and install Optifine. Boom. Optifine successfully installed. The only reason you can have an issue here is if you've never played the version of Minecraft you're trying to install Optifine for. And if that's the case, go play it with no mods or anything like that. Come back, and then this will work. Nevertheless, click OK, and it will close out of that. It's also worth mentioning Minecraft and all that should be closed when you're installing Optifine. That can also cause issues. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and open up the Minecraft launcher. And then once we're in the Minecraft launcher here, what we want to do is select the Optifine profile. Now, I have an Optifine profile right away, right? It's going to be here. Boom, there it is. There's the Optifine profile. But if you don't have that, click on installations up here at the top and make sure modded is checked. You can see you uncheck modded. It's gone. Check modded. There's Optifine. Now, if you still don't have Optifine, you can click new installation here. Name this whatever you want. For example, you can name this Optifine. And then click on the Optifine version here and save it. We don't need to do that, though. We have this version. Let's go ahead, hover over this, click on the three dots, and click edit. Now in here, what we want to do is change our resolution. I would recommend a 1920 by 1080 resolution here, which you can simply access by clicking this little arrow and clicking right there. That's going to open up Minecraft at 1080p, which is the same resolution that you're going to be recording at as well, right? OBS is recording in 1080p. So when I open up Minecraft, it takes up the entire OBS screen right away because I'm also running Minecraft at 1080p. So as you can see here, that's what I've set that up as. I would also recommend clicking more options, scrolling down, and then upping this X 
XMX from 2G, right like so, to 4G if you have the RAM for it. Now where this is a video for basically how to record Optifine with low end PCs in a way, for that case, you might wanna leave it at two gigabytes. However, if you have more than 16 gigabytes of RAM, you definitely wanna up it to four gigabytes. If you have 16 gigabytes of RAM, you could try it at four gigabytes. If you are getting lag, it might actually help you to lower Minecraft's RAM to two. Nevertheless, we'll leave it at two for this video, just in case you have a super low NPC, which you might, and that's what you need to leave it at. Click save there, and now we can go ahead and play Minecraft with Optifine by clicking play, confirming we're playing modded Minecraft by clicking play again, and now Optifine will open. While we're waiting for the game to open though, have to miss from our sponsor, Apex Minecraft Hosting. Go to the first link down below the breakdown for XYZ slash Apex to start your very own 24-hour DDoS protected Minecraft server. If you want to record Minecraft with your friends, Apex Minecraft Hosting is the way to do it. You can have a server up and running in minutes, and they have 24 hours, seven day a week support if you have any issues. On top of that, they have over 200 mod packs that you can install with one click. Apex is the best way to host a server. All of our servers are hosted on Apex Minecraft Hosting. So again, you can check them out at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to start a server to record with your subscribers your friends, anyone else that you want to play on the server, you can do it with Apex. It can be public, it can be private, it's up to you. Again, that is the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to get your server up and running. Now here we are in Minecraft. Now the goal is not only to set up Minecraft to be lag free, but also look decent on video, right? So that means we don't want to turn everything all the way down, for example. However, one thing I would recommend is actually running the default resource pack. Some resource packs say they'll increase performance. I've never really seen it make too big of a difference. However, I have seen them decrease performance, especially high-end resource packs like 256 Sfax Pure BD Craft, for example. So keep that in mind. I would recommend just running default textures. A lot of viewers also do have issues with different resource packs. And I've noticed if you just run default, not many people can complain. So nevertheless, I would recommend just leaving default there. Click done, you're good to go. Then we're gonna move on to basically the meat of this video, and that's gonna be the video settings. This is where we can really optimize things to make Minecraft playable, but also look good on video. Now, first things first, fast graphics is what I would recommend here. This is gonna give you a ton of looks, but it is going to help your FPS quite a bit. Render distance is actually one that I would recommend turning up to 10 if you can. However, eight is playable, and back in the day when I first started recording, I was running it too, believe it or not. But Eight is going to be very playable. 10 is recommended if you can run it. Simulation distance, this is basically how far chunks and entities around you are being updated. If you're playing a very zombie mob heavy pack, I'd actually recommend turning this down. It's going to make the game a bit easier for you, but it's also going to reduce the lag so, so much. So the lower you can make simulation distance and still keep playability, the better. Because of that, I would recommend 10 for a lot of people. It's gonna give you kind of the same as your render distance, right? And that's a good middle ground. The higher the simulation distance though, the more lag you're gonna get. Smooth lighting, I would recommend turning this off as well as smooth lighting level, turn that off as well. Frame rate, I would actually recommend turning that to unlimited. However, it can be smart to limit this to 60 FPS as that's most likely what you're gonna be recording at, right? So if you limit your frame rate to 60 FPS and you're recording at 60 FPS, it kind of keeps things you know, in sync with each other. For the purpose of this video though, we're gonna turn it all the way up. GUI scale, I believe auto kind of looks the best. However, some people do like the three option for recording because it keeps things smaller and allows you to see more on screen. Three or auto are gonna be fine. Auto for me is gonna turn it to four. Entity shadows, we're gonna go ahead and turn those off. Brightness, up to you. I'm gonna turn it all the way up, but it's up to you. That doesn't affect performance. Dynamic lights, turn off. Dynamic FOV does not affect performance. Now, regarding shaders, Makeup Ultra Fast Shaders is actually a very good lag-free shaders pack. And we have a link in the description down below to a few different lag-free shaders packs as well. And that can be a great addition, specifically one called Yo FPS Shaders in that list that is a very, very lag-free and really doesn't affect performance at all, but still gives you some of the shader feel. So with that, there are shaders packs you can run lag free, but for now we're going to turn these off. Mega Ultra Fast, for example, I can easily run with over 200 FPS, but I have a very high end PC. Now let's go ahead and click done there and move on to quality. Now in here is where we're actually not going to turn everything off. However, we are going to turn MIP map levels off, right? So we're going to turn those off and we're also going to turn off Androscopic filtering and anti-aliasing. However, we're not going to turn off random entities. We're also going to turn on better snow and we're actually going to turn better grass to fast. I've noticed that things like better grass and better snow don't actually kill performance a ton and can make things look a bit better when you are recording. Now, emissive textures is an interesting one because whether or not it affects performance is kind of up in the air. I actually recommend turning it on, right? Because it's a resource pack 
specific. So by turning it on, if you decide to add a resource pack later, which you can do, it might affect your performance, but that means you're gonna get the best experience if this is on. Same thing with custom fonts, custom colors, those are both on. Connected textures, unfortunately, is off. Natural textures, I'd recommend leaving that on as well. Custom sky, I would recommend leaving that on. Custom GUIs, custom items, and custom entity models are all on. All of this custom stuff, though, is specific to your resource pack. So if your resource pack doesn't have this stuff, it's not going to be in there. And if you add a resource pack, it adds a ton of lag. You might actually come in here and turn off custom entities and be okay with that. And that's perfectly fine and a way to reduce lag with a resource pack. Distortion effects... Distortion effects is up to you. I don't like distortion effects. It's like nausea and stuff. So because of that, I turn that off. Same thing with FOV effects. I turn that off as well because I don't like it. But distortion and FOV effects do not affect your performance. I just like them off. Moving on from there, this is where things get more interesting. The details panel. Here, I would recommend turning clouds on fast trees on smart and cloud height i would recommend turning that to you know whatever you want i actually like the clouds really high in the sky so i kind of turn it to 100 but for the sake of this video we'll put it at 50. then rain and snow turn that to fast sky leave that on stars leave that on sun and moon leave that on showcase up to you doesn't really affect performance fog leave that off View bobbing, turn that off or on, doesn't affect performance. Same thing with held item tooltips. The autosave indicator is up to you as well. I personally like it on, but it doesn't affect performance. Swap colors, unfortunately, turn those off. Vignette, turn that to fast. Alternate blocks, this is texture pack specific, right? So alternate blocks is 100% on resource packs. You can see, use alternative block models for some blocks. Depends on the selected resource pack. So I would leave this on for resource packs. Entity distance, turn this all the way down. It is, as it says here, it's going to reduce the distance that entities are shown. Entities are the biggest lag creator in Minecraft, so by turning that down, you do have a better setup there. It's going to be faster. However, if it does annoy you, you feel like entities are sneaking up on you, you can turn this up, but I wouldn't go above 75% for lag free recording. However, Biome Lend needs to be turned off, unfortunately. I love it, but it is pretty resource intensive. Moving on from there, we do have the performance tab, and this is where things really get cool because all of this stuff is turned on. Now, normally in these sort of Optifine setup videos, I turn smooth FPS and smooth world off because we're going for max FPS. However, here, I'm not really going for that, to be honest with you. I want to see over 60 FPS consistently. If we're over 60 FPS consistently, it is very playable. And not only that, it's very recordable because again, you're only recording at about 60 FPS max. So that's what you need to shoot for in game. If you're over that, you're good to go. So as you can see here, everything is turned on. Render regions, fast render, smart animations, fast maths, smooth world and smooth fps are all on chunk updates needs to be set to one that's going to be the highest fps sort of thing however if you do notice your world is loading slowly you can actually turn this to three and get a faster loading world while in turn lowering your fps only do that though if you're getting a ton of fps in game Dynamic updates, that needs to be on. Lazy chunk loading needs to be on. And Thread Builder, one second, let me check my notes. Here, I would recommend with going semi-blocking. This is going to be a kind of middle ground where all of the updates that you do, all of the chunks that you use in game are going to be updated immediately, whereas a lot of chunks are going to be loaded in the background and not take as much performance. If you are noticing issues and lag spikes when loading chunks and things, you could try threaded and that might give you better performance. But overall, semi-blocking is probably where I would recommend to be. It's where I typically run. And then animations, the best thing here is all off. Right, turning everything off is probably your best bet. However, I do know some stuff like flame animations, fire, water, lava. I like those animations. I like things moving. So because of that, I will go in here and select some of these that I do want to turn on and leave them on. You can also turn your particles to decreased instead of minimal, but I'm gonna leave those on minimal for now. In the other tab, there's not really much here that can affect performance. The only thing I would recommend changing is making sure if you're running full screen that you do set your full screen mode to 1920 by 1080 right there, right? It's what you want to set that to. If you don't set that, it could be a different resolution and there could be issues. Truthfully though, I would recommend turning off full screen while you're recording. That way you can have OBS up and see things like that if you have a more than 1080p monitor. Something else worth mentioning in here is that time and weather all can be turned off. I leave these default because I want the more default experience, as well as show FPS. I'm leaving that on, but for recording, it's probably best to turn that off. But by showing FPS on, it's easier for us to record this video because you can see it in game. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and click done, and we're actually done now setting up Optifine. FOV can also affect the wider FOV you have, technically the more lag you're gonna get, but we're gonna leave that at normal. Nevertheless, let's go ahead, jump into a single player world here, and we will see that this is actually decently lag free, right? So as we load in here, we will see, wait for it, loading terrain, 
And if we hit F3, or actually we don't need to, up in the top left, you can see we are consistently getting over 60 FPS, 500 FPS or more. And things look pretty good, right? It's actually pretty decent. Your grass textures actually go over the side of the block and all that stuff, it looks great. What's even better is if we come in here and we limit our FPS from Mac or Unlimited and lower that down to 60. Again, you're only recording at 60 FPS anyway. It's gonna stay right at 55, 60 FPS, barely ever dropping. It will drop a little bit always because as it loads, it's using frames, right? So that's basically how that's working. As things load in, your frames are gonna drop a little bit, but overall, super stable at 60 FPS and I love it, right? I think uh, the first number is the average FPS and the second one is real time. So we're averaging 59, 60 FPS consistently, and that's what we want. So nevertheless, there you have it. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. If you have any questions, we are more than willing to help you out. And again, if you do want to set up OBS, and you should go set up OBS now in the most lag-free way possible, this tutorial is in the description from Everything Tech. It's a great tutorial. It shows how to set up OBS at 1080p, 60 FPS, and get no lag with high quality. It's a great tutorial, and I cannot recommend it enough. So go check that out after you've got Optifine set up here. So there you have it. That's how you can record Optifine lag-free. The rain comes and look at that. FPS stays stable. I love it. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. I am out. Peace.